the first one that we're going to do, we're going to do a very simple uh, pulled pork with a elote asado, which is actually uh, Mexican grilled corn. So not everybody has an oven at home. I'll show you some interesting ways you can um, troubleshoot the situation. All right. Now, uh, first of all, we need to get the pulled pork going. This one, okay, um, is one of the better cuts for doing the pulled pork. This is actually um, what we call the five uh, uva rope. Okay, otherwise also known as your pork shoulder collar. So this one is very um, uh, nice to, to do a pulled pork. What basically we need to do is just a quick seasoning on it. And then we do a quick searing. Okay, this is the uhua roll itself. I got some Cajun seasoning. We just put this um, on it. Okay, if this is a little bit too big, all right, we can cut this into half. So we just do some Cajun seasoning on it. Okay, omit the um, salt because this one already has the salt, everything all in. So we just go all around the meat itself. Okay, if you like it spicy, the Cajun seasoning is not spicy enough for you. You can always add some chili powder or you can add some smoked paprika to it. Also, it's good also. So there's a, quite a, a, a choice of seasonings that you can use. Then when your meat is already coated up, what we're going to do is that we're going to sear it. Okay, meaning you put it in a hot pan, brown the meat, but you don't have to cook it. All right, so we just brown the sides of it. To have a little bit of oil in your pan. And what we do is that we're going to brown this piece of meat, okay, front and back. Okay, as you can see, uh, today we got live streaming on Facebook. Going forward, this is the new technology. Less and less people are watching TV. So now, okay, we're going to do live streaming, we're going to do live sharing. Um, you guys will not be so much on it. It's more about me, okay, so cameras are all looking at me. So, but then still, okay, you might get, I'm still okay for you, you all to come in front and have a closer look if you want to you know, need to. Um, just bear in mind that there's a, there's a camera behind you, uh, which means you might be in the stream also. So we have uh, a, some clearance that you need, we need you to acknowledge that sometimes you might appear okay, uh, subconsciously. Um, going forward, all right, um, this is the way that we're going to rara the classes. Okay, we are exploring new ways to reaching out more people to come. So definitely you will be, still be the first one to get the recipes first. So you can see, okay, the pan is hot, you put your meat in, it seals up nicely, you hear the sizzling sound, all right? That's, that's where you know that the pan is, is, is at, the, at the right heat level. So searing means you go around the, the, the sides of the meat, okay, brown it all over. And then we're going to put in uh, we're going to cook this up with a bit of barbecue sauce later. Okay, pulled pork is good because why? Uh, it's very easy to prepare and it's also something that you can do a little bit extra. Store it up in your fridge and uh, it makes a very tasty sandwich filling. Okay, so sometimes we have to rush for time um, and then, you know, less and less people are keen to eat um, things like ham, bacon because of the nitrates issue. Although it's not really a health, a, a big health issue unless you overcook the ham, you burn the, the, the sausages or what. But still people are trying to move away from processed foods. So the next thing that comes really nice as a sandwich filling or a simple burger filling is actually pulled pork. So you can see that now a lot of cafes, a lot of restaurants are serving pulled pork sandwiches also. <coughs> so you can make um, a little bit more filling and then put it in, in, your, in your fridge. All right, if you put it in the freezer, it will keep a bit longer of course. But uh, anytime you know you're hung you're hungry for a sandwich, you can just put the 
put the pool pot back into the microwave, warm it up, toast your bread, then you have a, a, a quick sandwich. So, sorry? Without microwave, steam it hot, no? Ah, or else you can just go back on the frying pan, okay, that's what you call la la jay, ah, stir, stir a bit, okay, add a bit of water so that it doesn't, not so dry, then we are good. So the meat is seared, all right, we put it aside. We're going to mix up some braising sauce together with it. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to do here. Now, in this pot, we will need a barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce, you have a choice. All right, you want to choose the one smoky, with the smoky flavored one, or there are some varieties that you know with some spices or chili added. You can use, no problem. So this one is uh, one of uh, my comics' newest products. Selected supermarkets have. I think Cold Storage is, is hold. This is a uh, barbecue sauce with a bit of um, smoky flavor tag to it. So from here, we boost it up with some ketchup and chili sauce. Okay, the chili sauce we're talking about here is the table chili sauce, which is a bit sweet by nature. Okay, we're not looking at things like sambal, chili, or not, not, not that kind. All right. So from here, we need some water. Let's get some water in. Okay, you're going to bring this up to ball. Yeah. Chili sauce, uh, two, three tablespoons is fine. Okay. Now, uh, bracing the pork, there is a choice. Okay, if you want a far quicker method, you do it at 180 degrees, about 90 minutes. Okay, your pork should be quite nice and tender. Um, if you don't want to have so much shrinkage, because when you, when you cook at high temperature, uh, the meat shrinkage is always higher. So if you can afford the time, all right, you might want to cook it at a lower temperature, which generally speaking doesn't make the meat shrink so much. Of course, it will still be tender. Lah. But uh, when you talk about a lower temperature, it means also a longer time. That means you have to go a bit longer. Uh, like for me, uh, what I will do is that I will put this in the oven a little bit later in the night, just before I go to sleep. So I, I lower the temperature down to about 140, 150 degrees. Then I let this sit for about six hours. Tomorrow morning, I wake up, I come back. The thing is nice. Okay, and you don't you won't see so much uh, shrinkage um, of the meat as well. So what we do now is that we're going to get this thing ball up. And then we have a little bit of extra barbecue sauce on the side. And what we will do is that um, we will touch up when the bracing is done. Okay? Alvin, can you pass me one copy of the recipe? Yeah. Sriracha is a bit too spicy. Okay? Um, and it doesn't have that sweetness or the sugar. So it's a, a little bit, um, a little bit uh, too, too strong for this. Okay? But if let's say you want your profile to be, the barbecue sauce to be spicy, you can use sriracha, smaller amounts, not so much, okay? And then it depends on your own <laughs> level of preference. If you like it more oom, you can put a bit more. But once you overload, you can't take it out. So I won't tell you exactly how much. You go according to your taste, what you like. Okay, this is the first part of the recipe. So the second part is the corn which is the elote asado. It's basically a grilled corn. Now, I know not everybody has a charcoal grill at home. Not everybody has an oven at home. But that does not mean that this cannot be done. Okay, there are still other ways to explore how you can do this elote. The most ideal is, of course, the whole corn on top. You put it on a charcoal grill, get the thing nicely brown and caramelized. Okay, but I know if you're not um, um, really into grilling or you can't really grill it at home, then uh, you can put it in the oven and bake. Okay, on the top with the top grill heat, get it nice and brown, caramelized. It also works. Uh, basically, what you want is that corn is very sweet. Uh, in particular, if you look at this one that I'm using, uh, this this kind of corn that I'm using is the better quality one. This has got the white and yellow corn niblets. Okay, this is the better grade one, which is uh, nice and sweet, um, and also very fragrant. 
So if let's say you got no oven at home, what you can do is that you pre-boil the corn first. It's okay, all right. Pre-boil the corn first, and then we can do it with a flame, uh, 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 a flame torch, okay, uh, which is now becoming one of the most popular gadgets to have at home also. So, like for me, what I've done here is that I've actually pre-blanched this corn. So after we take it out from the water, okay, we will we can blow torch it or we can choose to put inside the oven. Uh, the top grill also can. Okay? Because some people feel that, wow, this one I put in the oven, uh, uh, 40 minutes waste of electricity. So I'd rather put here on the water, boil it up, and brown it also can. Okay? But most ideal, most ideal, as what you see people, how they do it in Mexico, is actually on the charcoal grill. Okay? So they will, they will cook the corn on it. So this, this one is almost ready. Uh, we will pluck it out in a, in a short while. I leave this one on, it's more for decoration presentation later. Okay, the rest uh, later on we we'll just shave it up. Okay, here the mixture is boiling up. Okay, my oven is already preset. Grab a piece of aloo foil. Okay, or you've got a pot cover. Put the whole thing in. Okay, we leave it to brace for about an hour plus and come back to it. So in the meantime, uh, we take out our corn. I will show you a quick example of what we can do. Okay, some people will ask, do I need to butter the corn or not? In this aspect, I would say no. Why? Because later on, you see the sour cream that's coming in. There is um, cheese. Okay. So if you do the, if you butter the corn, it's, it's going to be too rich and too heavy. So what we'll do now is that if you're going to put into the oven to brown it, yes, you need a little bit of butter. But if let's say you're going to go by this method, the flame torch, then it'll be very fast and quick. Okay. So this will also help to create. Caramelization, okay, on the corn itself. Hair dryer, uh, good idea, but uh, not not the same effect, uh. Hair dryer, I uh, usually use it on the expressway. Uh. <laughs> you know why or not? Sometimes you get people speeding, uh, they take out the hair dryer, people all slow down. If you know what I mean, uh. Okay, so you just brown the corn very fast. Okay, that the the corn slightly a bit brown like this, huh? It creates a nice smoky profile. Okay, adds a, a little bit of a brown smoky notes on it okay so the rest we can go around it also okay blow torches are the newest kitchen gadgets that you must have you know in your in your kitchen now because a lot of people are doing uh, pastry they also use need to use blow torch okay, we are into desserts like creme brulee you need a blow torch also okay and the reason why this corn brown so quickly uh, is because it's very high in natural sugars. You use the other kind of cheaper corn, the yellow one, it may not get browning so fast. Okay, there goes the second one. Okay, remember when you do blow torch, your container must be all metal. Some of the simple um, things that you need to look out for. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come, come again. You put in the hot boiling water for how long? 
Oh, the boiling water. This one you need to blanch for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. What we want to cook uh, is actually the corn kernels. Inside the core is not cooked, never mind, because we're going to shave it off. So what is important is that the corn kernels are properly cooked first. Because here, using a blowtorch, uh, it won't really cook the corn kernels. But if you put it in the oven, yes, then you don't have to do the pre-boiling. You can just go straight if you want. But what I feel that in the oven is that you lose a little bit more moisture. The corn may not be so juicy. Hmm? This one, they call it the... It's, they call it... Okay, the, the packaging is called Super Sweet. Bio, uh, organic or Bio or something like that. But what I always look out for is it has got white and yellow corn kernels. Those are the super sweet ones. Yeah. And of course, price point uh, is about $2 plus. Uh. It's a little bit more expensive. Mm, brownish as in. I never tried that one before. Anyway, there's no harm experimenting. If you see new things in the supermarket, just buy and try. Uh, if it works, it works forever. If it doesn't work, you only buy one time on you. <laughs> right. No, different. Some of those colorful corn that they use for display are not necessarily is edible. And some corn is very glutinous by nature. So these are more the regular ones that we, we find on the table. Uh. Yeah, I've seen those before also. Okay, two more to go. Nice and sweet. Actually, one thing good with this method with the blowtorch uh, is that it burns off the loose beard also. Because corn, you know, got a lot of the, the, the loose beards. Uh, you can just burn it off. Well, sometimes you hear the crackling of the sound. Uh. Okay, it's also very enticing. Uh. Sweet potato, yes, but you won't you won't get so much uh, burning uh, browning. Uh. Okay, the last one. Once we caramelize up this one, then we can start to shave it off. Okay, we're almost done. Put this aside. Now, when you're done with the blowtorch, I always put it somewhere safe. Okay, otherwise people might, the next person that comes along might not be aware that it's just been switched on. So what we'll do is we'll put this aside. Then uh, we will come back to it in a short while. Okay, remember this piece with the tail end is going to be our presentation piece. What we're going to do is that we're going to shake. Okay, now I'm going to show you a simple hack, okay? Most of us, every time when we cook, when we need sour cream, we always go and buy, all right? But if, let's say, you got leftover whipping cream, all you need is just a little bit of lemon juice. Then you can get uh, your instant whipping cream, okay? And you can just do the amount that you need. Sometimes you buy the whole tub. After that, you use only three tablespoons. Then what happens to the rest? After a while, okay, the thing is completely wasted.
Okay, so what you will need some whipping cream. Get your lemon. Okay, this one averagely we're getting about almost uh, 150 to 200 ml. Okay, so roughly you can go a little bit more if you want. Squeeze your lemon juice in. Okay, this one seedless lemon, so easier to, to use. You start beating it up. Instantly, you see the cream taken up already. Straight away. Huh? So instantly you have your cream. Just need to make sure that it's completely whisked up. Okay, the acid will curdle up the fat. So you, you know, mix it up. Just beat it up. Once done, keep it cold. Later on, we come back to this because we're going to add some other stuffs in. But in the meantime, we shave the corn first. All right. Okay, what do we do to the corn? First, this one is our presentation piece. We cut this piece out. Okay, we keep this for our pie sweet. aside then this one we can shave it down all right now don't try not to break it up in the kernels huh? we try to keep them in, in whole pieces as possible then uh, it will be more that's you get more bite on it so we put this shaven corn kernels back in so this will cut it out okay break it up Okay, if you ask me, can I play cheat? Or not? Can I buy frozen corn kernels and then fry it in a wok and then get it all brown like that? Can I do that or not? Actually, there's nothing wrong, but it's not being true to the recipe. Okay, and what it happens is that here you get the bits and pieces, you get kernels and you get chunks like this. So um, that you can't achieve with um, frozen corn kernels. All right, but sometimes if you want a shortcut and you know the frozen corn kernels are actually um, also cooked already. So the idea is just to brown it in the pan over high heat. Well, there's, there's nothing wrong about that. It's just that uh, that's not being true to the recipe. That's how it's traditionally being prepared. So what I'm showing you here is um, as close as possible to what we can manage you know, in our own kitchens at home and yet still not deviate too far away from the actual recipe. So you can try. Mm. Very nice and sweet. Okay, so corn already prepared. We leave it to cool down first. 
Then, in the meantime, we can add in some other stuff that's going to go in. Um, we have got this one, uh, chopped tomatoes. Then we got some onions also. Let me pull out the onions. Okay, red onions. Couple of them in. This is diced tomatoes. Okay, skin on, seeds off. All right, so diced tomatoes already. Sorry, red onions, yes, for color. Lah. So what we can do also is that we can chop some fresh um, coriander or cilantro as they call it. Okay, remove the roots. Okay, a lot of Mexican food revolves around fresh herbs like coriander, parsley, okay, and their local version of oregano. So this it adds a lot of zinc to the whole thing. So just chop it up. an hour plus more for the pork itself so this one we put it aside now how to serve this thing well um, there are many different options if you don't want it to be too carbo heavy then you look for things like chips tortilla chips potato chips you know can just scoop and go okay the salsa together with the pool pot on, on, on top but if let's say you're looking for more carbo okay a, a bit more substantial then you go for your tortilla wraps you go for your this um, um, crab skin and all those stuff. It's possible. What I'm using for you tonight, this one, is actually our picking duck wrapper. <laughs> so improvise lah. Okay, um, you can picking duck wrappers. You can buy from uh, Guangxiang Thai. Okay, if you shop at Warehouse Club in um, Jurong, you can also get it there. But I think it's in bulk packs. Um, what they have in Guangxiang uh, Thai, they have the thing in 100 pieces, but it's like every 10 pieces in one bag, so you don't have to take out the whole thing. So you just take what you need and defrost. Okay, ready to eat. Um, if you want to warm them up, just steam, or else uh, in a microwave. Some of the chefs will actually lightly pan grill this also, also can. Okay, but this one is ready to go. So this is also for your picking duck. So sometimes when you all eat um, picking duck in the restaurant, Probably you'll eat the skin, uh, then the, the other duck, if you're not, you're not going to recook it again, then you can request for it to be chopped up, bring home. You, if you've got this skin at home, you shred up the meat, put your hoisin sauce, put your cucumbers, and then you, are, you have another wrap ready. So um, this one I will let you all use, try today, together with the pool pork and the corn itself. Okay, so um, up to this part, any questions you like, need doubts you want to clear? Uh, no, we eat straight. Go straight from it. Can warm it up a bit, no problem. I got a steamer standby also. Um, we can do that in a while. So that's why I keep a, a clean towel on the side. What's the brand? No, it's, uh, it's their house product, in-house product. Mm. For which part? The salsa, is it? Um, on your own preference, can. Okay, but uh, generally for the whole recipe, it does have a bit of onions there. Okay, are you concerned about because the, the onions are too intense, too strong, or you simply just don't like the onions? Oh, you don't take onions? Uh? Oh, okay, no problem. Because it's a, if it's a intensity is an issue, what I can suggest is that you all go to um, Cold Storage or, or Fair Price Finest. They have the Australian red salad onions, okay, which is like purplish color one. You find it in the in the store there. That kind of red onion is not so strong, not so intense like the the usual red onions that we buy from the provision shop or the the regular supermarket because those red onions are what we call the salad onions okay so they they are they are, um, they are used in salads so their their profile is that they're not so strong the the onion flavor is not so intense yeah but the one you use for cooking not so much uh not, not so much flavor compared to all these young onions that we're using yes if we don't have the blow torch, uh, yeah so, uh, we put it 
put it in an oven, okay? You can just, uh, if you want to pre brunch you can pre brunch and then 5 minutes, 10 minutes, under the top grill, about 220, 250 degrees. Uh, a little bit of butter first, then it doesn't, doesn't dry out so fast. Yes, Evelyn? And we did not get that there's no substitute for uh, the, the, the pancakes. This one? Uh? Uh, tortilla, tortilla wrappers, law? Uh, tortilla wrappers? Uh, you, those smaller, small tortilla wrappers you can use. Um, and there's no, no, nothing wrong with stuffing this into a hot dog bun or so. It's okay. You know, the, 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 in fact, uh, a hot dog bun will be better than a hamburger bun because the hot dog bun, uh, given that the shape is, you put a pork and the salsa, uh, the elote inside, it's okay. Hamburger bun is exposed, so it tends to fall off all over the other sides. Yeah? Hmm? Which one? Oh, the pita pockets. Uh, can you, you can put in that one also, no problem. So the the wrapper is your choice lah, basically. Okay. So if everybody is okay with this, then we are going to uh, while we are waiting for the pork, right? We let's jump to our last recipe, the roasted pumpkin, the crab meat. We can do our prep work for that, and then we come and do the assembly in a short while. Okay. The idea of this whole tapas menu is to space out your cooking method. Don't focus, concentrate on one part of the kitchen and everything is clogged up here. So what we wanted to do is that we want to space out everything. Use your ovens, use your range, use whatever equipment you can, you can, you can use to plan your menu. Um, this is roasted pumpkins, okay? Um, if you see in a supermarket, there's many different kinds of pumpkin. Okay, you've got a big one, small one, uh, a one that has a lot of flesh, uh, one that is like very hollow. Okay, generally the very hollow one, the cheapest one is from Malaysia, all right? Um, then you have the one that is green color skin, a lot bigger, a lot more flesh, uh, more fragrant, uh, sweeter also. That's the Australian pumpkin. And this one, okay, which is the most expensive, um, but has a lot of intensity and flavor, and is often used uh, for grills, for roasting, uh, even tempura. Okay, this is the Japanese pumpkin. And this is the only pumpkin where after cooking, the skin, you can eat it up also, palatable, okay? Uh, the rest, the skin's a bit too thick, so So this one, okay, I, you can, no wastage, you don't have to waste time cutting away the skin also. So if you've never tried this before, the next time you go to a Japanese restaurant, you order tam uh, vegetable tempura, probably chances are you'll probably get one of this in your tempura as well, as an assortment. So this one, how do we cut? When you buy, you scoop out the seeds, okay, remove it completely. Then you might want to trim a little bit here so that you can sit, sit more properly. And what we do, okay, this whole thing we cut maybe into about eight eight wedges. All right, so roughly when you're going to roast it, uh, don't cut it too thin because after roasting you might have nothing left. So we're going to cut it into about one to one point five cm wedges. So you get a nice crescent shape like this. Okay, the thing that you need to look out for is these pumpkins are sold already cut up and cling wrapped. Okay, when you choose, look carefully. Yeah, because sometimes the stock is a little bit old. Uh, the seeds that part already start to have mold. So just keep a lookout for that. Okay, so this one we cut it up into wedges. What we do? Let's get some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Drizzle over it first before we do our salt and pepper. Okay, if you reverse the other way around, your pumpkin is not going to catch the seasoning. So you need to get the oil in first. Okay, then you do your cha-cha here. Toss it up everything. Then comes your salt. Okay, there is no difference when you do seasoning like that and do seasoning like that. Okay, there's no difference. I know some videos you watch the chef do like that, right? Uh, that is for just for entertainment purpose. Lah. So you just make sure that your seasoning goes all around it. Some coarse ground black pepper. Okay, give it up a toss. Okay, you're not confident of doing this, do over the sink. Uh. So at least when you drop it, uh, you can collect it back. Alright. So when this is done, we get our roasting tray. Now, one of the most important things is that anything you roast with a roasting tray, put aluminium foil. Okay, any spillage or whatever, it will save you a lot of cleaning headaches. So from here, we get our stuff. Let's get our nice... Okay, spread it all out. This takes about 20 minutes to roast, so we can go together 
while the pool pot is still sitting in the pot there, uh, inside the pot. So we will share together the space. And how to, how to, how to gauge or how to check on your pumpkins. Okay, if you're not sure, take a fork, take a skewer, poke it. All right, when you can poke it nicely, it goes in nicely, it's soft, pumpkin is cooked. Okay, so there you go before I send it in, you'll take a quick snap. Yep. Uh, a bit wasted, uh. Yeah. When you are, if you are going to do soup or stew, uh, best option is still Australian pumpkin. No, the big one. That's butternut squash. You're talking about the pear-shaped one, uh. Uh, That's butternut squash. You, you can use butternut squash for this, but the skin is not edible, unlike this one. Okay. And butternut squash is quite seasonal. You probably get it usually around June, July. No, no, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, it should be April, May, or September, October, November. Okay, so when the either side, north or south, having autumn months, you find it here. Okay, so we put this in our oven, let it bake, 180 degrees, top, bottom, heat, fan, everything all go. Yeah, about 20 minutes, so go set it also, no problem. Okay. Now, in the meantime, while the pumpkins are being roasted up, what we can do is that we can prepare our crab meat. Okay, this also can be done ahead, but I would advise that you do your sauce and the crab meat separately. Okay, you mix it up only when you're ready to eat, because if you mix it up too early, say maybe about half a day too early, uh, what happens is that you get a lot of moisture le leaching out. So what I would suggest is that do your mayonnaise first. Okay, your wasabi mayo. We're looking at this one. This is the canned one. This one, Japanese grocery, supermarket, the owls there. Okay, where you find the wasabi tubes, you will find this one. Okay, powder or tube, you also can. All right. Um, to me, I find that the powder one is more intense. Okay, but the tube one, sometimes okay, sometimes not that okay. Whatever it is, okay. When it's, once you open up, make sure you put this in the fridge. Why? Because the 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 flavors are very volatile. If you leave it outside where the room temperature is too hot, after a few months, you only have the powder left. No aroma. Okay? So, um, we get a little bit mixed up. Okay, what you need to understand is that for this one, uh, the, the, um, the uh, flavor of the, of the sauce has to be a bit more intense because your crab meat is, is, is quite bland. Huh? So we have a little bit of water. We do a quick mix up. Why is it that we must go through this step? Why can't we just put this straight to the mayonnaise? It works also, what? why not? Yes, it does. But what happens is that, yes, yeah, correct. You get lumpy, okay? And then, and then the person that cannot take wasabi one, uh, if it's lumpy, uh, Bite on it, uh, wow, you see the veins here all popping out already. So it's better that you do, a, do it a little bit more thorough, mix it up everything into a paste, make sure that you don't have any loose lumps around. Ooh, it's so hot that you know, I can feel it in my eyes. Then our mayonnaise. Okay, this is what we call real mayo. Okay, not the starchy starchy type one. So we mix this all up. Now, whatever it is, uh, whenever you deal with wasabi, uh, keep the color natural. Okay, the last thing 
I would actually encourage you to do is to add food coloring to this. I know a lot of Chinese chefs are doing it in their kitchens for wasabi prawn, but it makes the whole thing look so artificial. Okay, what you want is the natural green color. Okay, because the wasabi is only very little, so you don't expect it to color the whole thing green. Okay, can you imagine? For people who really know what wasabi is, they look at the green color on the, on the wasabi prawn and they see, look at it, it's like, wow, how much wasabi you put inside there? So what we do here, we've got the crab meat, can one. Okay, take the whole can in. Hmm? Crab meat straight away. Yeah, can eat like that. Can eat like that. Okay, we're gonna put some spring onions inside here. Then back to our seasoning, some salt on it, a little bit of black pepper as well. Crab is one particular seafood that has a strong affinity with black pepper, so it's nice to have a little bit of it inside there. Mix it up. So we have this. Again, this one, you got leftover, you won't be wasted. Why? Tomorrow morning, toast your bread, nice crab meat sandwich. Okay, add a few slices of avocado, throw in a few slices of cucumber, you got creamy, you got crunchy, everything all there. If you, if you do your own sushi at home, okay, you can use this as a topping. Your hand roll, tamaki, you can use this as a filling also. So whatever it is, before you serve, always do a quick taste check. Okay, I'm not going to make this too spicy for you all. Huh? So, depending on your own preference, you adjust the intensity of the wasabi. Okay, because there's no one level that will please everybody. So, if you can uh, appreciate wasabi very well, you want to go a little bit more, by all means, please go ahead. Okay, so this one has to be kept chilled until you're ready to serve. Live stream. Don't know how many people are watching it. Okay, so what we do is that once the pumpkins are ready, okay, we let it cool down, then we can do the assembly. Okay? So any questions for this one? Quite easy. Now, um, bonito flakes, this is what some of y'all were asking. Huh? There are many different kinds of um, bonito flakes you can look at. Uh, some already mixed and flavoured with um, other condiments like, like um, sesame seeds, okay? And then there's uh, also some, like this one. Okay, this one is a, is a mixture that I got it from Taiwan. So locally, you can use your basic katsuobushi, which is your shaved bonito. You can sprinkle that on also. Um, you can buy okay, uh, in, the, in the Japanese food markets like Isetan, Medea. You can buy those already pre-mixed like this, also have. Um, in the worst case scenario, when you don't, you cannot get this one. You know, the other substitute is you don't know what is the, the seaweed condiment, uh, furakake. Sometimes you put on rice, that kind of one. Uh, you can use a little bit of that also. Nothing wrong. Ah, uh, so you can just buy that. Okay. So remember this kind of thing. Ambidextrous takes it in moisture easily. Once you open up, fridge or freezer. Okay. You leave it outside. After a while, no one will hold Okay, so this one is one topping. The other top topping we have here, this is Tobiko. Okay, uh, flying fish roll. This one is different from the shrimp one. Uh. Why is it different? Because this one you bite, I've uh, got a bit of crunch. Okay, a bit of crunchiness. The Tobiko one is just the color and it's a lot finer. This one looks a bit more pretty. Of course, if you've got money to spend, you can use salmon roll. So, you've got more money to throw, you can use caviar also, no problem. Okay, that depends on how much budget you have. Lah, uh. But, Tobiko roll, okay, you can get this in most of the major supermarkets when they sell Japanese uh, sushi, sashimi area. The side condiments where you have the seaweed, okay, it's there, okay. Um, if y'all often go to Fessler in up north in Woodlands, 
the, they have this frozen. So you can buy two or three tubs, leave it in the freezer, it's okay. Okay, so we'll use this as a topping, lah, so we won't be using a lot, but it adds the kind of nice bubbly um, fun factor, as we call it in. Okay, so that's um, our two main garnish for the, the crab meat with the, um, the uh, roasted pumpkins. Okay, our last one will be the fish, but before I jump to that, any questions you want to clear? Okay, so if somebody is asking, what if I want to pick my own fresh crab meat? Somebody asked me before. Can, no problem. But my advice is between the flower crab and the mud crab, choose the flower crab. Okay, the meat is sweeter, nicer also. Okay, and mud crab, uh, <laughs> if you can't have the spongy one, uh, then uh, you are looking at 50-60% loss. Uh. You're paying for the shell. <laughs> okay, so choose the, the, the flower crab, the meat is nicer also. Simply just steam the crab, cool down, then you pitch. Now, besides crab meat, can I play with other things now? Yes, if you got trimmings from lobster meat and stuff like that, chop it up, mix it up with the same mayonnaise, the same wasabi mayo, it can be used as a topping also. So it's not just restricted to crab meat. You can chop up prawns, all this cooked prawns, you can chop it up, lobster, mix it up, still, still works. All right. Okay, any questions for this one? What if I don't eat pumpkin? Okay lah. Sweet potato, I will say that you do tempura. Then you put this as a backdrop. Or zucchini also can. These are the other ideas. Or even eggplant also can. Okay? Can also. Purple potato also can. Okay? But all this, better that you slice it thin and then you do a tempura on it. Alright? Okay, just a quick check. Hmm? Chopped prawns. Cooked, ah? Prawns must be cooked, ah? Not raw, ah? Not, you're not serving uh, tata here. Sorry? Ah, poach, it, poach the whole prawn and cha -cha -cha -cha, go up on it. Okay. The sweet potato or zucchini. Mm. Eggplant also can. The cheetah's method. You know it's kanimi crab stick. <laughs> ah, up to you lah. I may say, no, I know it's not everybody likes it, but that is the cheetah's method lah. You know, bo budget to throw bo budget eh lah. Got budget to throw budget eh lah. So it depends on what you want lah. But I'm not saying that one cannot be used. That one can be used also. You'll be surprised that kids actually love it. Okay, this one is very easy to to, to for for kids. You know, not not difficult to cycle them to eat lah. Okay, so we come back in a while. What are we gonna look at next? Let's we do our fish. Okay, our last recipe before we do our final assembly. Fish again, there's two part. You have the topan mayonnaise itself. All right. Um, this topan mayonnaise is actually like a fusion thing. Okay, it has a, a element of uh, something like an inspiration from a, from a cocktail sauce. So again, we're looking at mayonnaise as our base. Then we need a ketchup, chili sauce. Okay, and this one, this is topan. Okay, topan. If you don't know what is topan, how many of y'all love? Let's show the camera first. Ah, a bit further. No, 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 no. This is not related to laukan ma. This one is your regular three A or your regular uh, to pan jiang Okay, if you love, if you love mapo tofu or if you love te pan tofu, that savory bean profile that that, is, that you find in that recipe comes from this. Okay, this to pan is the mashed up one. A uh, couple of brands have it lah. So three A and all those brands they have it. So you can use this, smell it so that you recognize what it is. But if you're going to use the original PCN Topan, the China one, or the one super intense, the Lao Kan one super intense. So cut a little bit, okay, put a little bit in taste, then check, then go from there. And where do you buy this? Any supermarket will have. And you see supermarket, any? Ah. Yeah. Chinese character. Ah. <laughs> uh? You ask the the lady they should know lah. You usually you label it as fermented hot bean paste or uh, broad bean paste or something like that. Okay, so how do we do this? Uh again we get our Mayonnaise out. Just 
Let's get a bit of ketchup and chilli sauce in. Okay, so what do we have here? Next will be our tou pan. So are you all ready? You're already giving back the tou pan, please. Otherwise, we will go with the wine first. This is Sao Xing Chiu. Ah. Okay, this Sao Xing Chiu, uh, point to take note. If we are using the cheap Sao Xing Chiu at home, ah, ah, or less than that, ah, don't use. Okay? No, it's not, no, it's not no taste. It's salty. Kiam, ah. And tou pan is kiam also. Then your sauce becomes too, too salty. Okay, if you want to have that wine aroma on the background, then you must use the, the, the one without the salt. Okay, which is this one. The kind of twelve ninety five or thirteen dollars a bottle. Yeah. Okay. Topan is back here. So we put some of this in. Then you mix it all up. Then we do our quick taste check again. Okay, so a little bit of that fermented bean notes on the background. When you eat, when you want to appreciate this, I uh, don't swallow too fast. Okay, you need to. You know, have it in your in your tongue for on your palate for a while, then you feel the, the broad bean paste coming from the back. So the egg yolks, that's that's what we're gonna use it for garnish. Okay, let's pull up our wax. Let's wear some home. Okay, what can we do next? Let's do our fish. You want me to pass it down or easier for you to take pictures? Uh, Lakyo, uh. Lakyo, the, uh, I never tried before, but no harm trying. Uh. But that one is a bit vinegarish. Uh. Lakyo is a bit vinegarish. Sung sung, uh, that one, yep, correct. Okay, here tonight we're using dory, yeah, but there's nothing wrong with going for other fish like uh, baramundi, okay, garupa fillet, snapper fillet, so it's all okay. Of course, if I can find sponsors, I will mind. Okay, what do we do with the fish? Okay, cut it into finger slices. And then we're going to do a simple seasoning of salt and Worcester sauce. Uh, okay. Okay, some salt over it. Worcester sauce is also known as your L&P sauce. Uh, generic, genetically, 
a lot of people go by LMB. Okay, so um, generally that kind of sauce we call it a Worcester sauce. Just drizzle over it, go around it. Then we crack two eggs in. Okay, the eggs will help it to get the binding better for the starch. Okay, so kind of like massage the fillet a little bit. Lah. So home preparation, this can be done in advance, no problem. Okay, morning do and then come back, then fry. No, it's okay. Or overnight is also alright. Here, here is one kilo. Uh, I cannot follow the recipe, otherwise you've got not enough to eat. So usually I will double, triple up the recipes. Uh. Okay, starch wise, we are going to go for potato starch. Okay, this is just only a, a temporary container. Okay, it's not my, my main container for, for coating. Um, what do we do? Okay, we check on the pumpkins first. Looks nice and brown. Okay, just get a fork. You choose the biggest piece, you can go through nicely. Sweet, sweet, okay. Then we are good. So let it cool down. Meanwhile, the pork can continue to braise. Okay, let our cameraman see. Oh, huh? You can remove the skin also, can okay, no problem. But the beauty of this pumpkin is that this is the one that you can eat with the skin on. That's the beauty of it. Yes, nutrition is there also. Okay, whatever. At the very least, you're getting a lot more fiber and roughage. Okay, starch-wise, we will still use potato starch as our most common one. But if you only have one kind of starch at home, which is corn starch, it's possible. It's okay. Okay, same thing. Tapioca also can starch can be used also. Yeah, all in. Okay, before we fry the fish, I'm going to fry up a little bit of... This is what I have here. This is uh, curry leaf. I just fry it for some um, um, garnish that we're going to use later. Cameraman, want to come over? Nah? <laughs> okay, so very simply... Basil. Ah, no basil, then forget it. Yeah. Okay, uh, one thing just to remind you guys, uh, a lot of time people always think that deep frying, you need a huge quality of oil like this. No. For the recipe amount that you're preparing, in the according to your handout, you can actually fry it in a pot like this. Just about five to six cm depth of oil is good enough. You fry in batches. Then you don't have to use so much oil. Okay, that's the way to to manage. Because you know, if every time you cook a deep fry recipe, you gotta open up, you gotta use up so much oil, then you're gonna waste a lot. So I put my curry leaf here. Later on, we use it for garnish. Water, we get rid of it.
So let's have some of the fillets coated up. Okay, once you coat them up, uh, don't let them sit lump together because what happens is that it will really cluster up and then later on when you break it up, uh, the, um, the coating is, uh, is not there. So it will, it will be stuck on, one, on, on each other. So what we do is that we loosen it up after we get it coated up. Have a little bit of it here. Okay, so let's get this thing. Okay, so we're almost there, last few pieces. Ah, this one you all felt cold, right? Who was complaining 20 degrees very cold? Now I'm feeling like it's 30 degrees down here. Okay, let's just get this. Bring this to our frying station. Today we're using dory. Yeah. Yeah, it's about one kg. Study more than one kilo. First piece go in, okay, you watch, you see, no reaction means your oil is not ready. Okay, if it's vigorous like this, then it's good. Then you can just go.
look at our full pop. We should be almost there. How long to fry? Okay, the telltale sign. Usually when you're frying it, okay, most of the food when you start to float up, that's an indication that it's cooked. Then you wait for the, the right color also. Okay, a little bit more golden brown. So once it floats up, it's telling you that it's almost cooked already. Steamer, yes, um, nothing. We just nothing inside there. Got water lah. You mean the double fry, is it? Ah. It's to get a crispier texture. Oh. Yeah, but the second round of frying also dries out your food. So it really depends on what you want. If you want a piece of fish that's more dry but crispier, then double frying, no? that's what they always do. Not necessary. Because as long as you still got moisture, you still got steam coming out from the food that you're you are cooking with, that steam will also uh, cause the, the batter to puncture also. So now, uh, now uh, those watching the live stream are all lao noa, but you all get to taste. See, that's the difference between coming for cooking class and watching it on YouTube. Okay, we reserve some, I got some dark egg yolks here, salted dark egg yolks. Uh. We will shave this on top of the fish fillet. So we put a little bit on each piece of fish. This one is optional, lah, huh? but you want nice color, contrast. This is uh, an idea that yeah, you can you can think about. Okay, did I do one for plating? Uh, don't worry, you take this one and makan first.
Okay, utensils are behind the camera there. So at least you all don't block the camera. So um, we've got one missing, is it? Yeah. Just hang on. Okay, you all take the first. Yep. Can. This top and sauce, once you prepare it before. Okay, this one is our pool pork. Huh? Just put it aside first. It's not very soft yet, but we will still let it cook for. Later, uh, when you try the pumpkin, uh, make sure that you go for the whole thing. All right? Don't don't omit the skin. You never eat the pumpkin skin before. Just go for it. This one is roasted. It's very nice and sweet. Okay, our wasabi crab meat. Okay, what I'm going to do here is that this one is the packing duck wrapper. Just warm it up so that later we can have it with a pool pork. Mm. Yes, that's hoisin sauce. The tamian jiao also they use, but sometimes they cannot find tamian jiao, they'll go for hoisin. It's quite similar actually. La. So either one also can. Sorry? No need. Just use it as a direct. If you find it too concentrated, just add a bit of water, dilute out can ready. Yeah. Because you see, um, in Europe and US especially, all the Asian stores, they don't carry tamian jiao, they carry hoisin sauce. So over time, People accepted it as a substitute for the tianmian jiang. But it depends on some places that like in, in Taiwan, they love to use tianmian jiang for it. Yeah, Beijing also the same thing. Okay, so let's... Yeah. Come again. Where to get tianmian jiang? Okay, this one is your tobiko, eh? so it's like the crown on it. Trust you, ah? Yeah, we had some ho ho the recipe that I shared. We all got some hoisin inside there. we got nice color contrast the first one sure this one uh, if you just say you've got not enough time right you can actually do this first the pumpkin can be served cold chill no problem so you can go ahead and prepare this and put it in the fridge Yeah, correct. That's why I say you stand by, use this as your um, ready to go sandwich filling. You got your defrost, lah. Uh. 
Okay, the liquid from the bracing, uh, you can add back to the pork itself. Okay, so that it's not so dry, it's got some moisture. Okay, so in the meantime, we can mix up our elote. Because you shred it, yeah, so that's the, the pulling motion. Okay, so what we do with this, um, this one, right? Okay, the sour cream is here. Uh. Put all the mixture. Remember your seasonings, some salt, a little bit of pepper, okay, then we're going to shave some cheese in, this is, okay, by right we should be using some Mexican cheese, but if we can't get it, then we choose a semi or a hard cheese to shave in. So here I've got the most one, uh, the common one everybody knows, this is parmesan. Uh, you can go for others like manchego, it's fine. Okay, you can shave a little bit of um, uh, cheddar. I mean, jack cheese is not really that recommended, but you can still, in terms of flavor wise, I'll still prefer either parmesan or manchego. Okay. So we mix everything up. Okay, if you want, add a little bit of Cajun seasoning in. Just a touch of it. How was the pumpkin and crab meat? Shook ah. The pumpkin quite nice, right? After you roast it, ah. It was kiam ti, kiam ti, pua kiam ti, that kind of. Very different from the, the other two pumpkins that you all commonly use, ah. Sorry? Okay, now you see, ah, the pool pot. You got a nice mixture like that. Okay? Yeah, or the gravy, la. or a bit of a barbecue sauce to it. Uh, you can, this one you adjust according to your preference, no problem. Okay, the pastry is here. Warm up ready. Why I choose this baking duck pastry is because it's not so, um, not so thick, okay? What's that? Can. Uh, you mean as a slow cooker? La? Can. Do a quick taste check on this, then we will know what.
So you get your page three. All right. I'm not going to wrap this up fully uh, so that you all can see. You can get a bit of shredded cucumber or lettuce as your base if you want. Then some of this elote on it. This is on its own. Uh, on its own is quite nice. You can actually eat this just with the, the, the chips. This one. All right. You can just take it like a corn salad also. It's quite, it's quite nice. Or if you want to go so-called almost vegetarian, then you skip the pool pork, just wrap this up and... Okay, here you can smell the pool pork. This one has got a bit of the smoky barbecue sauce inside there also. Get this. Ooh. Just for photography, lah. Huh? You'll go for this. And I'll make the the pool one for you guys. Oh, wait, we're supposed to put this here. Mm. Okay. Put under pressure cooker. Yeah. No, actually you can, but you have to reduce the sauce after that because there will be a lot of leftover sauce. So you got to uh, reduce the sauce. 